this point I can't see it. But. Oh, you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Everybody let him on me. This is the verbiage. So. Yeah, if it's okay, I'll give it a shot. Um, I can try to help. From myself. KKTV, no. Shannon from KRDO, because he worked at KRDO as well, and died. Wasn't going to cover it. We want. He told me Don's last words. He told me Don's last words were, "Please tell everyone I love them." Yesterday, when I came down here, did a little. Uh, practice run. I had not, I'd only seen the stage once before, but I didn't see this until yesterday. Considering his last words, folks, Don gives his love. And that was so bizarre to me to see that because it was very fitting. Towel or, I don't know, socks, whatever. There is a story behind this plaque that I hope, and in the journalism field and in broadcasting, I know that there's a term about digging up dirt. And that's always kind of used pejoratively that newscasters and, and uh, newspapers always dig up dirt on people. Well, I believe that Don Ward did, but in a different sense. Dignity, integrity, respect, and truth. In my memory of Don, those are four things that will always remind me of Don's dedication to his craft, to his friends, and his family. So he did dig up dirt, and we are a better world for from his actions. So I want to thank you again very much for coming up, celebrating with us, and uh, Cindy. Thank you, all of you, for coming on the behalf of Don's family. Um, we have family here. Um, my daughter, Julie, my son, John, his wife, Alexa, her parents, and then we have Chris and Kathleen Lennon. So we do have family well represented. My mom would have loved to have been here. She knew she couldn't handle this. It would be too hard on her. It's hard enough on the rest of us. But I'm so thankful all of you were here. And there were 15 people walking in England. And they walked from the Three Conies Pub in Thorpe Mandeville, where we lived, all the way up to Colworth, where Don had gone to primary school and his best friend Daryl still lives. And they took pictures all along the way. And I will be posting those on our Facebook page, A Walk with Don. It is a public page. Everybody post what you want. It is a public page. Let's celebrate Don. Um, but I have these wonderful memories of England. They would have loved to have been with us. And we will do a walk in England at some point. The whole Ward, Dylan, Lennon clan is heading over to do something, OK? But we just appreciate you being here. Um, when we're done sharing some Don stories, we do have a special toast to do with Don. So. Um, be prepared for that. Don't go scattering off. And I guess I'll start with, I, I brought a picture. This picture was taken, I believe I was three and Don was two. We are a year and five days apart. Last time I saw my brother was on July 23rd, 2020 on his birthday. And we went and had lunch at all of all places back east because that's where he always wants to go. I tried to take him somewhere else, but no. <laughs> Um, I did text with my brother the night before he died. He was up at Copper Mountain. I have owned property in Copper Mountain for years. Has he ever come to see any of my property or visit me there? No, but he did go the very last night he was alive. He was in Copper Mountain. And we actually had a conversation about my property in Copper Mountain and a couple of other things in a final text. So I'm so glad that he reached out to me. Um, 
but this is a favorite picture. He and I just kind of, we grew up together. We always celebrated our birthdays together. As we became adults, um, you know, he cheered for the Buffs, I cheered for the Irish, you know. We had to deal with that, because in the 90s, they were going at each other's throats. But it was, we became closer as we became older. I think as my children moved on, um, I can remember a Saturday or Sunday afternoon just going over to his house, just stop by, and three hours later, we're sitting out on that deck with that view of Pikes Peak, and we're still talking. So I miss the fact that I'm not going to have a future with him. I mean, the joke was that we were going to buy a house together. Diane says it's a castle, but <laughs> I think it's a house in uh, England. Uh, he would send me real estate clippings all the time. The problem was, Don wanted a show house. I wanted a home. So I don't know if we ever would have found one that would have worked for both of us. But yeah, Julie's not shaking her head. No way, because Don and I had very different. However, a lot of Don is in my house right now. If you come by my house, you will recognize a lot of things. So Don has not gone, and I miss the future that we could have spent time together as adults, without children, without jobs, and spent a lot of time probably in England and going to Daryl's place in France, and who, else, who knows where else we would have gone. So I have tons of Don stories, but I'm not going to bore you with them. Just know that this was, we were, we were close, but we weren't smothered. I don't know if that makes sense, but we were there for each other without overwhelming each other. So I would like anyone who has to share a story, and I actually am going to call one person up to start, and that is the closest thing he had to a partner for, fifth, for eight and a half years, Diane Derby. Woo! From KK, from, now from KOAA, it used to be KKTV. Woo! Yeah. Oh, I get a and I know Di knows how to use the microphone. <laughs> and she is now my, my sister of the heart, we call each other. <laughs> I feel like I have a new family in the Ward Dillon family, so I feel very grateful for you. Thank you, Cindy. I was not expecting to come up here today, but I'm so grateful to share with you that I am in awe of Don's friendships and his closeness with his family. His family and friends were everything to him, and this is clearly... Um, a display of that today. So it's so beautiful to meet all of you. And I know so many of the stories from being behind the scene. And I do think I was the closest thing to a wife he ever had. And we would fight like brother and sister. Anywho, um, if we're talking about like our favorite Don stories, I don't know if I have a favorite. I will say he made me a better journalist, a better person. And he knew how to write things faster than anyone in the newsroom, right, Spencer and Danielle? Like the fastest, the cleanest, the clearest, the most engaging, the most interesting. And so we had such a wonderful role model in Don in our newsroom, and I'm so deeply grateful for that. I'll tell you a funny story. And when you watch us on the news, we always had our hands on the desk. But if, ooh, okay, Tom, beautiful class. He's like, okay, that's a good <laughs> if we didn't have, I know, he's like, die, stop droning. You have to limit this to 30 seconds max, I, and I will. Um, but when our hands were not on the table, it was because we were pinching the living life out of our legs because we were laughing so hard. And Don taught me that was my only way to stop laughing on air because usually in commercial breaks, he was pretty ridiculous and silly the whole time. And then we'd come out and talk about death and destruction. So the only way that we could make it through was by pinching our legs. So I'll always have permanent scars on my legs from Don Ward. So thanks, Don. <laughs> That's all I want to say. And I'm just so lucky to know Don. And after he died, I just knew that it wasn't the place for me anymore to not have my partner at KKTV, and I took some time off. And now I work at KOAA, which is kind of crazy. I did have a very special gift that I gave my new co-anchor um, with the permission of Don's family. I gave him a tie, and he's a very, like, kind of um, tough guy and very non-emotional, and he was in absolute tears when I gave him one of Don's ties. So it's really cool to share that. I know many of you have his ties, too, and proudly wear them on your Spencer. So it's a really special gift to share. I'm Don's niece, also known as Unky, so I'm probably going to be referring to him as Unky from now on. I want to bring up a story about our whole family and that how it ties to today specifically. So our whole family from Dylan, Ward, Lennon, way beyond, we're all very stubborn. And if anyone knows Unky or knows Don, you'll know that's very true. He was very stubborn, very true to his ways. And today when we had to bring food to feed all of you, 
we were like thinking, what can we do? What can we bring? How can we feed all these people without making some massive deal out of something which he wouldn't have enjoyed? And so we decided on sandwiches. And the reason we decided on sandwiches was because Unky hated eating out. He hated going to restaurants unless you were in and out in like 10 minutes. And if you ever traveled with him, you know that you're gonna be getting a sandwich from a grocery store and sitting out and enjoying the view. You're not gonna be wasting three hours in a restaurant. So that's the reason why today we brought you sandwiches. And the reason why when you're leaving today, you're gonna be getting a shot glass was the same reason. Every time someone in the family or friends would go on vacation, they would bring back a shot glass forever for him. And he hated it. He didn't know how the tradition started. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't want it to continue, but everyone wanted to continue it for him. So we ended up div dividing up the, the shot glass collection, but we thought one last way to get the shot glasses out and to remind, to remind everyone of him was for everyone to have one with a shot of bourbon, which not that I knew much of his drinking habits, but I knew he liked a little bit of bourbon. That's the one thing that we talked about. So that's why we have the sandwiches and the bourbon glasses today. And it's just to remind everyone of how stubborn he was, but how loving he was. And the reason why he enjoyed sandwiches outside was because he could enjoy the view and enjoy the company, not just be in a restaurant. So I think that's very much explains him kind of to a T. Um, Don and I were good students. I mean, we, we did what we had to do. We got grades we needed to get. We went on, we, I think have, used our, our education for good, not evil. But, um, the, um, but we both had an intellectual curiosity that sometimes was more important than our academic achievement. And it wasn't unusual for Don and I to be walking to a class. We'd get up at eight in the morning to go to an eight o'clock class and be walking to our classes and decide, well, you know what, let's try some other class. So he might be going to economics and I might be going to you know, music appreciation or something, and we'd say, huh, geology, that's cool, let's go to the geology class today. <laughs> and I'll tell you, I remember a lecture, it's the only lecture I ever went to in geology, and it was about glaciation, we learned about glaciers, and I still know things today about glaciers that I didn't know. We went to, there's a lot of geography classes, we went to economics, went to history classes, we even went to, I think, one math class, but that was it for that. And, uh, we, and we never went to any like engineering classes or anything that would have actually challenged us in some way. We also had to be very careful that we wouldn't be called upon in class, which in larger classes generally was not a problem. But we were kind of terrified because some of you may remember, because I think a lot of you took economics, Ruben Zubro, who was this giant economist and everybody had and taught there for like 100 years. Um, he actually called people out in a class of 200 people if he didn't know who you were you're reading the newspaper or something like that. But, but that's something I think about a lot. And, um, and it culminated one day when Don and I were going to take a final at, at least, I don't know, like 4.30 in the afternoon or something. So it was about two o'clock and we decided that we would go to the New Orleans Library. And I'm laughing because that's such an unlikely thing for us to do. Um, but we decided we we're gonna go to New Orleans Library and we we're gonna study there. And, we, and it was actually pretty full to our surprise. And um, we walked all the way up trying to find some place to sit. We're sitting on the floor in the stacks. We were there for about 10 minutes. And then we both looked at each other and were like, Pizza Hut for a beer. So that's what we did. But we both still did fine on those finals. That's just a memory that I have of him that, again, um, was so unique and, and different than, you know, the myriad parties and other kinds of things. But uh, I will always remember that. And, um, it's been a tough year, so it's great to see you all here. So the other day I sent Cindy an email saying that I really wanted to do this, but I didn't have anything to drape over the plaque. So I accidentally copied all, so you all probably saw that email, which completely removed like the fake that I could pretend that I got up here at a moment's notice and hadn't planned it at all. Um, which really sucks because if there was one thing that you all know that Don was awesome at, it was this. And so I really kind of want to honor him by being funny and making you all laugh because that's also the thing that Don was best at. Um, but, you know, I didn't want it, to, you know, anyway, I just thought that was kind of funny. So I kind of want to just share a couple of quick memories of Don before you all knew him because I was lucky enough to meet Don. Joe, how old were you when you and Don became friends? Tenth grade. Tenth grade? Yeah. So I'm in eighth grade. And I remember the day that I met Don Ward. 
he walked into my basement and I'm down there listening to probably some horrible 80s hair metal band that I was into at the time. And I meet Don, says hello and everything, and he says to me, yeah, I used to be into that hard rock shit. <laughs> and uh, I always remember the way he said it. It was just so funny. I'm like, who is this guy? I'm like, what are you into? And of course he says, oh, my favorite band is Queen. <laughs> Queen. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Um, Three years later, Don and Joe and I actually went to see Queen in concert, and I'm pretty sure that's the only time Don ever saw Queen with Freddie Mercury as the singer. So, like, all of that was just kind of stuff that happened. And, and what some of you probably don't know is how much Don was involved in my life through high school. Like, my first job ever, 15 years old, Don got me at Baskin Robbins. Um, when I was 15, Don and I used to go play tennis all the time. and. One day we were walking out of playing tennis, and Don throws me the keys to his, it was a Buick Opal, I think. Uh, yeah. Don throws me the keys and says, you're driving home. I don't have my learner's permit or anything. I'm like, what? It's like, you'll be fine. We have the parking lot, you'll get used to it, you'll drive home. And, and so after that, Don used to occasionally let me drive his car, so by the time I got my learner's permit, I was good to go. I knew what I was doing. Um, yeah. um, I won't go into it, but you know, first time I got drunk, this is Don. I think the statute of limitations on that has ran out. Um, what was the other one I was to say? Um, I kind of mentioned everything. The one thing, kind of segueing into what a lot of you guys know here, is when I was still in high school, I used to go visit Don up in college. And when he was in the dorms, I used to sleep on his dorm floor. And then when he moved into the house, I crashed up there a few times. And I met a ton of the people here before I was even in college. And to this day, I remember the day that I met both Kevin Jacobs and Keith Love, and I met both of those guys, not at the same time, but within probably 90 minutes of each other, um, like a one-on-one -on -one introduction, and like those are two guys that have been in my life significantly since then. And there's so many stories like that, and of course when I went to see you, Don is the one that pushed me really hard to be a Lambda guy. I didn't want to be some frat loser, but Lambda guy is awesome, and I'm lucky that I, I did it, and uh, I'm lucky that he talked me into it. Um, and I, um, yeah, so those are just some stories. I think you guys will kind of cover the college years, hopefully. I expect you to. Um, but I just kind of wanted to share that, that um, I, I feel lucky that I knew Don at that age, and he's been a part of my life ever since. I could talk also about just how good it's knowing that um, Don is kind of always there for you. And even though we kind of lived different lives, Don was always that guy, like, if I sent him a text message saying, hey, let me know when you have a minute, I just want to talk to you about something. He had no idea what it was, but usually my phone would ring within 30 seconds. And he'd be like, what's going on? Because that's what Don was. He just, he cared about you, and he wanted to make sure that you had whatever you needed and would do anything for you. So, anyway, thank you. I'm David Palmer, and I'm, a, I'm one of the Lambda Kai's here. Brother and Don and I were in the same clutch class together, and with a lot of these guys starting the first starting Lambda Chi up at CU and Recharge Arena. Um, I want to thank Kevin Jacobs for attending that eight o'clock geology class that I was supposed to be in, but I wasn't there. So thank you for going there for me. I hope I'm glad you learned a lot about glaciers. That professor would eight in the morning. He'd turn off. He'd start the class and then turn the lights off at eight a.m. and show us slides of glaciers, which were interesting. But man, it put you to sleep like that. So. I wish we had remote learning at that point. All right. Um, so two, a couple stories. Um, one, you guys know about Don's passion for music. And he had such a passion that he convinced a whole bunch of guys who couldn't sing a lick to join into Songfest and teach us to sing. I come from a family of singers, and I'm not a singer. So I, I, was, I think he made me a harmonizer, because I think I was the only person that could somewhat harmonize in the whole choir. But you know, we did all right. So. But he brought that to us and, and made it a good time. And it was probably our only way to get in to actually meet sorority girls, I think, because we were a bunch of nice guys and nerdy guys. But you can tell we've done a lot of great things, you know. But at the same time, that was a struggle for a little bit when we first started out. Um, but what I came up here to share was my hat. Okay, so Don gave me my nickname in college. And. Uh, he gave a lot of people nicknames, I believe. And so um, I always wear a hat. I, I think it was because when, ever since I was a kid, I'd, wear, I'd always had a hat on. And even in college, my wife's like, Dave, you're not going to give him that sweaty hat, are you? And I'm like, well, I wasn't. But I should, because my hat was always sweaty and cruddy and worn all the time. So I was like, yeah, I think I am. <laughs> and so 
he called my hats. I, I when I had a lot more hair, I used to have hair that would stick up at the back, and he called me Spider. And my hats had a name called Spider Hiders. And so my comfort, my contribution to this is one of my Spider Hiders. No, it's yours. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> I've got another one because I always wear a hat. <laughs> So I've got another spider hider. I've got about, I don't know, 100 of those out now, you think, my wife? So, um, but I just want to, my, my heart goes out to all of my friends, all of my brothers, all of family. We love Don, and uh, he was a special person and a great human being who contributed to this world in a positive way. And so for that, salute. Well. I don't know what I'm going to say quite yet, but... Uh... I feel like I'll fail because I feel like I, I want to do Don justice being up here and, and I feel like I won't. Um, before I talk about Don, I, I just want to say something about Joseph. I just told him thank you a minute ago and he said, I just asked a bunch of people to hike and I feel like he lied to me. This is a big deal. And one of the things about being in groups, whether it's a fraternal or whatever, is different people step up when things need to be done. And Joseph, you know, just stepped up big with. Cindy and uh, all of us really, really appreciate it, and it's a uh, it's it's a big deal. So, thank you guys. Um, I, 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 in Seinfeld, that George Costanza talks about words. His even his words to. But when I think of Don, I, I, I think of two things. One is how smart he was. And you, you could not be as funny. Everybody knows Don is so funny. I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody more funny than Don. And you couldn't be as funny as Don unless you were just crazy, crazy smart. And uh, that was one of the great things about hanging out with Don is uh, uh, just whatever you would talk about would be just on, on, a, on a level you wouldn't think of. And, and he would just, like I say, have so many jokes just because, you know, he was, so, he was so smart. And uh, the other thing about Don is, for me, he he kept our friendship going. He always made sure we were doing something together. And, 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 and after a while, that just turned into we would just have lunch every month. Uh, we would meet near Denver and meet, meet near Carver Springs. And I don't even know how many years that was. It, it, it might have been eight. It might have been 15. I, I don't even know. It's just what we did. And... Uh, uh, I just loved having lunch with Don and, uh, and hearing what was going on, mostly about his uh, nieces and nephews, who he loved so much, and uh, that was always right in the front of any, everything, so uh, uh, I really, I just, you know, loved having lunch with him. And I, I guess we're supposed to tell a story, so I didn't tell a story yet. Um, one of the things we used to laugh about was, it was part of Don just being so smart, was he he didn't always go to all of his classes. I guess he was going to other classes with Kevin. Uh, but uh, he got to a class once, and, and the, the, the test was there. And the, the question was, how would Professor so-and-so uh, describe whatever the subject was, geology? And Don knew he didn't know about the lecture, but he did know that he could describe how the professor would do that. So he answered the question by saying, well, I don't know anything about that geological subject, but I do know how a professor so-and-so would do it. He would walk in, he would you know, do this with his computer, he would uh, uh, ask a couple of questions that nobody knew the answer to, and then act all you know, high and mighty when he knew the right answers, and he just went, and, and that's what he turned in for his work. And uh, <laughs> Don was just really funny and, uh, and not shy about it, so that, that, that's me. Met Don in 1987 when I joined Lambda Chi, and uh, um, like many of us, never intended to be in a fraternity, and and never believed in any of the other stuff that C fraternities did. And then we met guys like Don and Kevin and some of the other and Steiny and some of these guys that were complete dorks. And we're like, oh my God, if a fraternity is a complete dorks, we fit perfectly. This is going to be great. And uh, and so we 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 joined and. Um, I remember my, my, so many of my stories with Don, particularly remembering his stories, are not 
appropriate for mixed companies. So we'll just leave those out. But what was amazing about Don's stories is I've always watched his pattern, and he would take one or two, sometimes three facts from something that really happened that weekend or in the previous week. Sometimes stupid stuff happens. When you have 25 guys living together in a house, it's not pleasant often. Um, and, uh, but he would take one or two facts, and then he would start spinning a story and adding to them and who was involved in what. And by the end of the story, you literally were on the ground laughing so hard. But when I thought back to those, his gift was that he never victimized anybody in his stories. He was so respectful that by the end, you felt bad for the person that had gone through this thing. And he just made you care about whoever was going through that. And we had some, we had some characters in our fraternity across the board and, and he made everybody feel included. Um, we had, a, we had a, a young guy who was uh, not here today. He's actually now a physician who looked like he was about 12 years old that rushed our fraternity. He was friends with several of us from the dorms. And I remember when the, the part came through where you had to kind of decide whether we were gonna give him a bid or not. And several guys are like, no way, this guy looks like he's 12. We can't have this guy in our fraternity, no way. And Don stood up and said, this guy's totally cool. He's smart, he's got a great future. And sure enough, Dean went on to being a physician. He was a trauma surgeon in Iraq. He was in the military, did some great stuff. But Don stood up for the little guys. Don stood up for everybody. I just, so many of my memories was him telling funny stories, but it never hurt. And if you were the one in the story, it never hurt to be in his story. You kind of enjoyed the fact, even if it was a little embarrassing. So um, Don brought a lot of good into this world, no question about it. I think everyone will, will agree to that. Um, but I just, so many of those miserable Monday meetings that we had were made fun because of Don Ward. And, and may he rest in peace. He was such a great guy. I miss him so much. From right up when he uh, rushed Lambda Chi at CU, um, I graduated in 87, so he was there for a little bit longer than I was. And uh, when I left CU in 87, I moved down to Florida, and I really kind of detached from uh, most of the guys in the fraternity, with one exception, and that was Don. I found out, I guess it was a few years after I moved down there, that Don was a weatherman in Cincinnati. And I reached out to Don, and he was so quick to respond to me. And it rejuvenate that friendship. It was just amazing. And so over the years, occasionally Don and I would reach out to one another. And um, about the last year and a half, Don set up a Zoom meeting amongst the brothers of the fraternity. And he brought together a whole bunch of us that had fallen apart over the years. And it was really just such an inspiration that that was happening because of the work that Don did. Don was probably the most genuine person I have ever known, and I miss him greatly. And to that I say cheers, Don. Thank you. A good family friend of the Dillons, and um, in 2018, my husband and I had never been to Europe, and we had a 20-hour layover in London, and so I texted Don, and guess where he met us? <laughs> At Back East Grill. Um, but he just like for the hour and a half, like just off the top of his head, like I was just writing frantically, where to get off, where to go, here's this stop, see this, this, and this, walk this way. I mean, he just had it all planned out and I have it here on my OneNote that I had uploaded so that when we went, we just had an amazing time. But like Julie mentioned, um, you know, his, his recommendation, you gotta stop at Tesla or Sainsbury. <laughs> And you get a sandwich, you get fruit cup and chips, you know, so it was, um, it was just a highlight. And I have to tell you, Cindy, I'm very honored today to have walked with Don. It's something that I will always treasure. And I'm sorry, um, but I am um, glad that you would plan this for us. Thank you. As and as if I transferred to CU and I show up at CU with a car full of stuff and I'm going to try and find out where my dorm is. And I get there and they go, oh yeah, well, we're full. And I said, well, what am I going to do? They're like, well, there's this off-campus housing room where, you know, people put up flyers with a little fold-out thing and they said, here's a phone. It's before cell phones, of course. 
And I called it, uh, there's a Keith Love and Matt uh, had, an ex, had an extra room. So I was like, what the hell, why not? I gotta find some place for the night, right? So uh, so I ended up staying in that, in that apartment for the first year I was there. And a few doors down was Don's apartment. And you know, I just got to know the whole, then I joined the Lambda Chi, of course. And just got to know everything. And I, I can't say that I've got a single story because the whole time was a story, right? Every moment that you had with him, I mean, I, I think of Don right now, and all I could think of was himself falling on the floor laughing at his own jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and he would just roll on the floor because it was so damn funny. It was so hilarious for everybody. But, you know, we were all blessed by being able to have that time and you know, three, four years of college, and amazingly, what brings everyone together here in one spot is is just a, a friendship. And I feel like, at the core of that, at the nucleus of it, it wouldn't have been the same experience if we didn't have all uh, Don being a part of it. Yes, people join fraternities all the time, and they have lifelong friends, but I don't think we would have had a lifelong group as much as we do here today. So. Great job, Don, and made a great impact on everyone. Quick story. I would say it's a story that lasted, like John was talking about. It's, it wasn't my complete moment. It was like a complete three or four year running story. But Don had these alter characters. I mean, he was a professional stand up comedian in college that could have done that uh, he just could have done so many different things but he had this uh, my favorite favorite character was Gus and some of you guys might remember Gus was an old crusty old man that he he portrayed just at the spur of the moment all the time he would take the situation that was happening and he would then go into Gus and Gus hated little kids and he hated dogs he hated everything good. This person. And it sounds pretty trivial, but what I would say is, is that I think we are not just a level, just like a special upper level. Um, you know, I've only maybe met a handful of those people, and, and Don was somebody when I first knew him, I'm like, that person is going to become something significant, something major. I could, I could just tell the first time you met him. And uh, he's an idol. I mean, I was idolized Don and a number of other people. We had some very, very incredible people in that fraternity, fortunately. And uh, he made a huge impact uh, on my life. Uh, I don't. I didn't know him as well as some of the people because I left Colorado post college, but he made a huge impact on me, and I knew he was going to be something majorly special. And he did not disappoint. He he did exactly what I thought was going to happen. And I just want to thank Don for the impact that he made. I know he made an impact on many people's lives once he became basically a celebrity, and people were watching him on a daily basis. My mother and father-in-law in Pueblo, uh, I married their daughter and, and we met in Boulder and, you know, we moved around all over the place and we would go back to Pueblo during Christmas or the summers and they're like, you got to watch this news anchor in Springs, it's Don Ward. I'm like, Don Ward? I know Don Ward. I know a Don Ward and there he is, you know, because I was away from Colorado for a very long time. So they just... You know, they even knew he was special. Um, they wanted to point that out to me. So anyway, thank you, Don. Rest in peace. I was Ruth's friend. John, Don was just one of the kids. Cindy and Jim, my boys and my daughter. And so most of what I know, I met John when he was about 12, 10, 12, 13. And um, I knew he was a good kid. And good student and his mother talked about him a lot. Um, she told me all the time about his accomplishments and the places he was going and things he was doing and she was so proud. I lived in, um, 
I lived in Colorado Springs for 40 years before retiring to Arizona seven years ago. And I became, I'm a big fan of Facebook. I know a lot of you aren't, but I am. Vaughn became my friend, both in his KKTV persona and his personal persona. And um, he went for a walk every day. And he took a picture of Pike's Peak every day and posted it on Facebook. And when I moved to Arizona, that meant so much to me to see that because I woke up every morning for 40 years and saw my window at Pike's Peak. And it was one of the few things that I missed a lot at Colorado Springs. Um, I knew Don and I knew him to say hello to him to visit with, but um, he, was, he was a very special person. We will all miss him a great deal. As John um, mentioned a little while ago, I became friends with Don. And My first memory of Don is I came into a class late. And it was supposed to be kind of a debate class for American history. And I got up and started talking, and Don just said, sit down and shut up. So afterwards, I didn't know if he was really going to be friends with me, but he realized that I had a car, and he didn't, and he needed a ride somewhere. So he asked me for a ride. and. Somehow we became best friends. We were best friends all the way through high school. And we did everything together. We were in plays together, musicals. He played trombone in the marching band. He played bass in the jazz band. I played trombone in both. And then um, we had a little bit of <coughs> a falling out in college. So we, weren't, we weren't close friends. But even when we um, weren't doing a lot together, um, the point was made that Don really reached out to people. and. There was not one year since we first knew each other that he didn't just call me on my birthday and say happy birthday. That was really great. Um, after college, we got married, and somehow we became friends again. We started doing a lot together. And one of the biggest things that we always had together is, is music, and that's been brought up a couple times, but we um, went to many concerts together, um, not just here in the Denver area, but you know, across the country. He introduced me to bands like that I love right now, like um, My Chemical Romance and Muse. And um, of course, we went to Queen concerts a few times. And um, we also hiked together a lot. I hiked with him on Pikes Peak five times, I believe. And um, I think he hiked almost every year at Pikes Peak, so he, he did a lot more than I did. But um, we had only hiked three weeks before he did pass away in this mountain on Pikes Peak, and um, so it was a real shock to everybody, and it's definitely a shock to me when when I got a call on his phone the day after his hike here, because um, they wanted to reach out to people and let let them know that Don had passed, and so we're all gonna miss him, but um, he was a really important person to many people's lives. Hi, I'm Spencer Wilson. I was one of Don's co-workers at KKTV. Uh, and I was lucky enough to learn a lot from him, and that's that's how I knew him. And I do feel a little bit like an imposter here because it's so clear to me how many of you guys have shared so many special memories, and I only had a short time with him. But that being said, I think that's one of the most important things that I learned about Don. And listening to everyone here talk about him was how intense he was in being friends with someone. Because it feels like he was, as someone said, very genuine. It feels like he was willing to give you as much of him as you wanted. And he was never pushy. He was never, I need to be doing this. But if you needed him, or if you had a question, immediately he was there to present his answer. And usually it was the right answer. But it, it's, it's hard to think about another person who has so generously given of themselves because they just like having you around. And it's hard to compare that to other relationships and it's hard to compare that to what you will miss. My two stories for Dawn, one is not my own, but I will pass it along as if it is. Uh, was Don was in federal enterprise, which I'm sure everyone here understands and knows. But and I, I wasn't even here for this, but I love the story so much and Diane can help me put this it up. But uh, we have a teleprompter that we're reading as we sit at the desk. And 
he is so good that during one of our stories, it was an awful story, it was a story of someone who was shot, and it was a family memorial of a situation, and the line, I believe, in the teleprompter was, Jeremy will be remembered for nothing else. There was nothing in the teleprompter, and of course, Don, not missing a beat, just rattled something off along the lines of his laugh and his friends always loving them. We'll be right back. <laughs> and Diane, I believe, sitting next to him, witnessed this whole event, looks at him and is just going, did you just make up a man's <laughs> obituary? What's happening here? And yet he played it off so perfectly. And to this day, I think of that moment, and it is so perfect because you can just see, I wasn't there, and I can see the smile on his face the second they cut away from him. It just goes, <laughs> which I love so much. Um, I had something else I was gonna add for another story, but it, it's just clear to me that this man transcended what you would expect from just about anybody you could bump into. And it's not enough to say that he was special, it's more that he's one in a lifetime kind of a person. And I'll miss him. and the Rappold and the Wards. My first job was from uh, John Hall at Baskin Robbins, who evidently his job was from Don Ward, so uh, there's that connection as well. Um, let's see, I, um, my brother Scott was a year older than Cindy. Uh, Don was a year younger than Cindy, and I was two years younger than Don in high school. And Don was my very, I think it was my very first high school date. <laughs> I have forgotten. <laughs> oh, um, and I, I remember we went to a movie. We went to Poltergeist, which is actually a really good movie to go to on a first date because it was scary and it was funny, and uh, we had we really enjoyed ourselves. Um, after the ice cream and enjoying our, our date um, and Cindy and my brother Scott walked in and I think Don was just a little bit um, upset that our date was interrupted by his older sister and my brother who possibly had come to check things out and make sure everything was going okay. Um, but even though um, obviously Don and I didn't work out, I ended up meeting a wonderful man in college um, and have been happily married. Um, Don had set a bar way back in high school for it being a perfect gentleman, for being a fun date, a caring date, and just listening to all the stories here, his loyalty, uh, his love of his nieces and nephews. I, I, I wondered what kind of husband Don would have been. He would have been wonderful, and he would have been a wonderful father, but, but maybe that's just not how life worked out, and instead he was a wonderful friend, um, a wonderful son, uh, mother and wonderful sibling for his um, two sisters um, and his nieces and nephews those were his kids so that's how it worked out I was pleased and and honored to have been on a date with Don Ward uh, and we were uh, we were lucky enough to get connected in with the Ward family my brother Greg married Don's sister Jen so um, people say like how are you related to Don well, okay, it's my, my, I don't know. <laughs> Didn't matter. Um, but one thing I remember about Don that's really neat, and it's it's interesting uh, hearing everybody talk about, we all know how much he loved music and that. And when I first met Don, the kind of the first impression I had of him, and maybe one of the first things he, he kind of uh, exuded was, this is so cool that we're marrying into the Lennon family. Like, I'm related to the Beatles now. <laughs> so, so that was like one of one of my early impressions of Don. Um, we we hit it off pretty pretty early, and, and kind of one of the the treasured memories that uh, my wife Kathleen and I have. And and I find it ironic here 
um, was hearing about how he didn't like to go out to dinner, but we would always, for his birthday, we try to take him out to a fancy dinner. <laughs> Not realizing that sandwiches would have been a better <laughs> choice, but, uh, but you know, Don always being the perfect gentleman, always went, went along with it, and, and it, was, it was always kind of a highlight for us uh, every year to, to catch up with him, and, and it's just neat. It, it, he, he, to, to family, um, in a lot of ways, I think my wife Kathleen puts it best, yeah, every family kind of has somebody who's like the glue that holds everything together, and that's exactly what Don was and still is to, uh, to the Leonard and Ward family. So um, he's going to be missed personally, but he's really going to be missed as, as the glue that kind of held this family together, so it's up to the rest of us to, uh, to keep that going in his spirit. So I don't, I don't really have any stories, but just some great memories of him. I feel like I'll fail because I feel like I, I want to do Don justice being up here and, and I feel like I won't. Um, before I talk about Don, I just want to say something about Joseph. I just told him thank you a minute ago and he said, I just asked a bunch of people to hike and I feel like he lied to me. Uh, this is a big deal. Uh, one of the things about being in groups, whether it's a fraternal or whatever, is different people step up when things need to be done and Joseph, you know, just stepped up big with Cindy and uh, all of us really, really appreciate it, and it's a, it's, it's a big deal, so thank you guys. Um, I, I, in Seinfeld, they, George Costanza talks about worlds, his, he didn't want his worlds to collide, and uh, when I heard about Don wanting to just be outside and eat a sandwich, I felt like maybe worlds were colliding because a lot of us kind of remember Don as more of a guy in a pub, <laughs> and and they're all nice. So uh, uh, it, it definitely have a couple of world, worlds colliding here. And uh, uh, Don Don was you know obviously a lot of fun. Um, but when I think of Don, I, I, I think of two things. One is how smart he was, and you, you could not be as funny. Everybody knows Don is so funny. I mean I don't, I don't know anybody more funny than Don, and you couldn't be as funny as Don unless you were just crazy crazy smart. And uh, that was one of the great things about hanging out with Don is uh, uh, just whatever you would talk about would be just on on a, on a level you wouldn't think of, and, and he would just like I say have so many jokes just because you know he was so he was so smart. And uh, the other thing about Don is for me he he kept our friendship going. He always made sure we were doing something together, and and and, and after a while that just turned into we would just have lunch every month. Uh, we would meet near Denver or meet, meet near Carver Springs, and I don't even know how many years that was. It, it, it might have been eight, it might have been 15. I, I don't even know. It's just what we did, and uh, uh, I just loved having lunch with Don and, uh, and hearing what was going on, mostly about his uh, nieces and nephews, who he loved so much, and uh, that was always right in the front of any, everything, so uh, uh, I really, I just, you know, loved having lunch with him. And I, I guess we're supposed to tell a story, so I didn't tell a story yet um one of the things we used to laugh about was was part of don just being so smart was he he didn't always go to all of his classes i guess he was going to other classes with kevin uh, but uh he got to a class once and and the the, the test was there and the, the question was how would professor so-and-so uh describe whatever the subject was geology and don knew he didn't know about the lecture, but he did know that he could describe how the professor would do that. So he answered the question by saying, well, I don't know anything about that geological subject, but I do know how a professor so-and-so would do it. He would walk in, he would you know, do this with his computer, he would uh, uh, ask a couple of questions that nobody knew the answer to, and then act all you know, high and mighty when he knew the right answers, and, he just went, and, and that's what he turned in for his work. And uh, <laughs> Don was just really funny and, uh, and not shy about it. So that, that, that's me. Don would give up his house on Easter, and then he started doing Thanksgiving. That's all. He would give up his house. Except, Don always... Oh my God. Guys, you do know, these were Don's hiking boots. Guys, Don's hiking boots were with us today. So I want to make sure everybody knows that this is, this is what Don... Also, if you haven't seen that he, uh, heard or seen that he received broadcast, not a lot of broadcast through the year, we have the award, Matt Reward, right here. 
posthumously awarded, which is also on uh, mentioned oh, in the on the front. This is broadcast with the words. We'll talk again soon. What? Oh, his blog. I'm sorry. Stand corrected. Ends his blog with "We'll talk again soon." Good night, John. I mean, good night. Here's Donald Joseph Ward. Cheers. Cheers. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Ah!